This is actually a real story on CNBC and it features Sam Dogan, who actually is the author of Financial Samurai. I've read his content before, fantastic. And he's very generously shared some light into his early retirement journey. Today, I have five key learning points to share with you. Sam got to early retirement because he's actually done very well in his corporate career when he was working with Goldman Sachs. And he's shared before that his base pay was at least $250,000. But more importantly, he's actually saved up more than 80% of his active income when he was working there. He built his first million dollars by age of 27 and was eventually a multi-millionaire by the time he retired. So today, let's keep an open mind and discuss on the five lessons that he shared in his early retirement journey. Hi guys, welcome back. Without further ado, let's dive on to the first lesson today, which is interest rates can stay low for a long period of time. Just a few years back, if you had a million dollars in a bank account, you would have netted $20,000 if interest rates were 2%. But right now, it looks like more of $8,000 if you have a million dollars inside, simply because bank fixed deposits look about 0.8% right now. Nobody could have forecasted that interest rate would have came down so severely and stayed low for so long. And if you have wanted 20,000 income from fixed deposits, Right now, at 0.8%, you would have to have $2.5 million inside the bank fixed deposits. Many retirees are realizing now that they have not invested enough. They have been too conservative. But the big difficulty is adjusting the risk appetite after being so conservative for so long. But because of the low interest rate environment, you realize that properties have done well. Equities have also done well. That is why it's important to maintain a diversified portfolio of assets because some assets do well in low interest rate environments and some assets do better in high interest rate environment. So when you have a mixture, assets like equities who have benefited now can compensate for the lower income you can derive from bank fixed deposits. Key message is don't avoid investment risk, especially in your retirement years and to always accept investment risk in your overall planning itself. Lesson number two, life changes can happen. Sam, he's actually shared that he had a kid shortly after he went into retirement and that threw his overall plans out of the window. Why is that so? Because with a kid, you see that there's increased costs, there's diapers, there's school fees and convenience becomes a very important factor in life for a family. Some families might even need a car and that definitely costs some money. Not everybody is going to retire in childbearing years yet. But even if we retire at an older age, we should always be aware that family members can become dependent. For example, your parents who are now healthy could become ill and they require more medication costs. Or for example, your child contracts certain diseases or injuries. All these could inflate the overall family medical costs. And it may not stop there. There are also many stories of family members who have made bad investment choices or got scammed and require other family members to help financially. So these are pretty unpleasant situations, but it has happened before to some retirees. So always keep in mind, life changes can still impact you when it comes to your retirement. Lesson number three, downgrading is hard. Sam has shared that before retirement, he wanted to go to Hawaii to lead a more peaceful, low cost life. But when he had a kid, he found it difficult to move away from San Francisco. In fact, he wanted to stay in better neighborhoods where there's more convenience and better schools. And what he realized is that the median income needed to stay in San Francisco in a good neighborhood required $309,000 per year in terms of income. And with him deriving $250,000 per year, that left him $60,000 short. But of course, we can always say that he made that choice himself. The learning point is sometimes our choices will change in our retirement years. And without kids, living anywhere is okay. But with kids, our choices change. Or without elderly parents with us, anywhere is okay. But with elderly parents, we need a home that's well suited for them. Without this pandemic, many people were okay with a small home. But with this pandemic, we realized that people needed more space because working from home and studying from home became more and more common. That is why downgrading may not be as easy as it seems when it comes to your retirement. Lesson number four, social interaction can suffer in retirement years. With this pandemic, I've also realized that a lot of work is done from home and in a lot of ways, I meet very few people a day as compared to pre-pandemic and sometimes it does feel a bit lonely and a bit aimless. And Sam has actually shared that when he chose early retirement, 
many of his friends were still battling the corporate ladder. They were still working, and there was no one to keep him company in the day. His friends were still updating their own LinkedIn profiles with new positions, and suddenly he seemed very out of place. So to encourage more social interaction, he actually joined more hobbies, one of which was tennis, and he slowly formed new friends in his tennis circle. So the first thing is, when you choose early retirement, you have to be ready to be at peace with it. If you're competitive in your corporate career, you should be okay that others may overtake you. You should be at peace with it and put your pride to one side. The second is that you have to be ready to put yourself out there in your retirement years to make new friends. That is very important for good mental health. Lesson number five, the happiness in attaining retirement was short-lived. Now maybe you are also battling very hard in your day-to-day for your career, for your work. And all the time seems to be spent in office and in meetings. And you've always imagined that if you get to retirement, that would be such a nice place to be in without all the stress. But studies have shown after a period of time, our happiness would moderate back to the original level. Same with sadness. When you feel sad, it's also usually for a temporary basis before you start to accept things and get used to it. In Sam's sharing, he's mentioned two things in particular. The first is identity. Previously, he used to be a banker. And when he retired, he found it difficult to describe his identity. He realized that people would assume that he got a big inheritance from a family or that he was simply just lazy. But that's actually very far from the truth. He's actually worked very hard in his 13 years in corporate. And he's actually been financially savvy enough to work himself to this retirement position. The second part he also shared is that he enjoyed some parts of his work a lot. And those included bring his clients to see companies to get investments in. He also missed company events where he got to unwind with his colleagues and naturally there was a time to build strong relationships. So what we might need to do is to keep ourselves occupied and happy. It doesn't make sense to go to the beach every day. If you go to the beach once in a while, it feels good. But in the day to day in retirement, a good suggestion would be to be in activities that you are passionate about, that challenge you mentally so that you'll continue to find your time meaningful. So if you have benefited from this discussion, smash the like button and press on subscribe. We'll be launching more ideas on retirement planning in the coming weeks ahead. So I have a question for you. Which of these five lessons resonate the most with you? Leave in the comment sections below. And since you're still here, I have actually a bonus comment to share with you. I actually found this comment while doing this research. And it reads, I took early retirement about a year ago. The first six months was like being on vacation. After that, I started to realize that not having to work does not automatically mean you will be happy. I think we are conditioned to believe that our work is the main source of stress in life. When that is removed, we are forced to look deeper. I found that being happy is about being mentally healthy. Being mentally healthy requires close regular interactions with family and friends as well as some purpose of work. You won't be happy long if you do nothing or do only things for yourself. I think what I've missed out so far is close interactions with family and friends. So maybe it's a good reminder. When you get to retirement, look to improve the family bonds that you have. Look to strengthen the connections you have with your friends. And then you'll really see yourself being happy. With that, I'd like to say a big thank you for watching till here. And check out these videos related to retirement. And maybe one of them can inspire you further. Take care and goodbye.